Uh, good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have you this evening. Glad to have you. Glad to see you. I'm glad to hear from you. We usually meet every Friday from 5.30 to 6 p.m. We get to discuss different aspects of business, key things to learn in business, key principles to apply in our businesses, in our workplaces. So we meet here every Friday from 5.30 to 6 every Friday. So it's always a pleasure to have you and I always look forward to sharing with you a few insights that the Lord has blessed me with that I choose to freely share with the public. It's always an opportunity and always look forward to having you here. My name is Jonan Kanranaho and I'm the Managing Director at Jonaki Holdings Limited and uh, we specifically do money lending we have a money lending license and we've been doing money lending for the last seven or so years. We also have an arm of transport, car hire service and bridal cars, as well as business consulting. We coach, mentor, and consult in the area of business. I have passion for business and that's a very emphasized that all the things that I share, if they are applied, and you benefit from them, that will be my great, great joy. That will be my great, great joy. So, I'll go straight to today's topic. Today's topic. And the title is Money Lending as a Business. Money Lending as a Business. In one way or the other, you've ever lent out money to a friend whether with interest or with no interest, you've ever lent out money. Somehow, you've ever lent out money. And it's most likely that that money was either not paid back, or half of it, or a quarter of it, or a small bit of it was paid back. So somehow, somewhere, whether with interest or not, you've ever lent out money. So you've been, you've ever been a money lender at one point in your life, and most of you, actually, this applies to most of you, you have been a money lender in one way or the other in your life. The difference is whether you charged interest or you didn't charge interest. The other difference is if the money was paid back or if it was not paid back at all. If half of it was paid back or a little of it was paid back. Now, why I choose this as today's topic is that if you've lent out money and sometimes lost it, I don't think it treated you well. I don't think it's what you actually love to do. I don't know if you liked it by losing your money just because you lent it out. So some key, key insights that I'd like to share with you that you can learn from and they will actually guide you and help you. Whether you would like to take money lending as a business for you, or you do not want to enter in there at all. So this should actually help you to make an informed decision whether you would wish to take money lending as your business or not do it at all. Not to be half, half, 50-50. One of the key insights, one of the key areas that you can learn from is that if you've ever lent money and you have interest in lending money, then you should look at formalizing the business. Formalizing the business. Now, I shared previously in one of my YouTubes that if you commit your time in doing a business, or any entity, if any entity is worth committing your time, then you had better formalize it. 
unless you're doing it as by the way, of which then you shouldn't even be doing it because if something is being done as by the way, one, you don't give it attention, two, it won't give you results that you need, three, it won't even grow. So basically, if a venture is done as by the way, there are lots of things that you lose than what you gain from it. That's why I don't believe in the term side hustles. Sometimes the side hustles are not given attention and ultimately they collapse, they fail. Just because someone has not given them the ultimate attention that they are due. More still, someone has not even committed staff who are there full time to run that particular venture. So if you intend to run money lending as a business, then you had better formalize it. And formalizing it involves registering it with URSB, getting a license from Umra, and all the other details. Because Umra comes with a lot of requirements that actually I have to have in place. But at the end of the day, if it's worth committing your money to lend it out with the risks involved, then you had better formalize that business. So one of the key insights is to formalize that thing. If you've been lending remotely, if you've been lending somehow, knowingly or unknowingly, with interest or with no interest, then you had better formalize that business and the returns are amazing. As I shared before, Jonaki Holdings Limited, we do money lending. And I've been doing this for the last seven years. And as Arya shared, I don't share these things just out of blue. Most of them, I've practiced them, I've seen how they work, and that's where I commit, where I get the confidence to actually share with you. So the key insight number one is formalize that business, formalize that money lending business. You might say, Jonah, formalizing this business is costly. What is not costly? If I may ask, what is not costly? Not formalizing and you lose the money that you lend out. Because once you lend out that money, you are at the mercy of someone paying you or not paying you. Either way, you do not have a right to actually get that person to pay you back. You can't even sue them or take them on in the courts of the law. Meaning that the money that you lend out has the high risks and high chances of being lost. It has the high risks and high chances of being lost. And you cannot get any redress in the courts of the law because you're not formal, because you're not registered, because you're not licensed to do that discipline. And that's why some of the guys say that the money that you lend out and you're not registered should be the money that you can afford to lose. Now, if you're looking, that, if you're looking at that money lending as a business, that means you're going to keep uh, lending little money that might ultimately have little returns and it will ultimately not benefit because they say that you can only lend money that you can afford to lose. Meaning that there is a particular ceiling, there is a particular limit that you're not going to surpass. And you'll be limited on returns. You'll fail out on returns. You'll not get the commensurate returns you'd have gotten had you formalized that venture. So it's to your benefit that you actually formalize that business, that you formalize that uh, money lending business, irrespective of the costs. And interestingly, the costs that are involved in formalizing money lending business are not as high. They're not as high. But just because someone, when he hears, you know, registering, getting a license, you look at big monies. Sometimes it's not necessarily big monies that you actually use to get your business registered to even uh, get a license. So fear is not of God. Fight that fear, go straight, check out those institutions, formalize your business. If it's money lending, formalize that thing. And you won't regret. You'll come to me and appreciate. The returns are amazing. But you'll benefit of them only if you formalize that business. That's key insight number one. So if it's worth doing, then it's worth formalizing. It's worth taking one formally. It's worth committing your time. Or else, do not commit at all. Don't commit your time, don't commit your resources, because ultimately, you're going to get 
over 90% defaulters and your venture might actually collapse. The money that you're saving in quotes, thinking that you're actually saving for not formalizing it or registering it or renting out a place or an office to operate from, you eventually lose it through the clients because they will take advantage of you, because you'll be at their mercy. Because anytime they might refuse to pay and get along with it and you won't have anything to do with them. So how about you incur the cost that is even manageable so that you shield yourself from clients who can take advantage of you? Then key insight number two, key insight number two, make use of the network, of your networks. Now just like any other business, money lending, clientele is grown along the way. You do not wake up one morning and you think you're going to get 90 clients or 100 clients or 1,000 clients in just one week or one day or two days. Clientele is built. And you don't, especially for money lending, you don't build clientele from the outside public or the people that you do not know. Money lending thrives most from a clientele shared through word of mouth. You serve a client, he goes or she goes and tells another client, another friend. There is this guy who is who can help you out, who can lend you money. There is this guy who can actually sort you out. And this is where we come in handy. Where other financial institutions say they are taking a, a week, two weeks, one month to give you a loan, maybe worth 100 million or 80 million or 50 million, or 150 million, money lender can actually get you that money in the quickest time possible. So through word of mouth, you can actually build clientele. So one thing you should have at the back of your mind before you launch out to the public, most so if you're not registered, first make use of the available network. First share with your colleagues of what you actually do. You're there with your colleagues, potential clientele, but you cannot, you're even ashamed of sharing with them what you do. You are ashamed, you feel shy, to tell them that you actually lend money. And this has been usually brought about by the wrong image, by the bad mentality that has been created by fraudulent money lenders. Most of them actually are not licensed because the things that they do, if they are licensed, they wouldn't even be allowed to operate. They wouldn't be allowed to operate. So through that, People are taking advantage of. So if you're thinking of uh, doing money lending, make use of your network. So through your network and through word of mouth, you can actually build a trusted clientele. Because the game changer in money lending is trusted clientele. Trusted clientele. Just like any other business. But for money lending, it's exceptionally trusted clientele. So you can imagine if you build your clientele from your network, the trust is usually very high. And I won't tell you why money lending has been connoted as a business that is, you know, bad, fraudulent, they cheat people, they sell their property. What mind are you going out to the marketplace with? What mind are you launching out with? Is your intention to take a client security, collateral security, or is your intention supporting that client so that you can as well make business with them? At Jonaki Holdings, we give you loans, not with the intention of taking your land, not with the intention of taking your car, not with the intention of taking your collateral security, but with the intention of supporting each other. I'll give you an example. Someone is importing some things, he's stuck at the border post, he needs some 50 million. He has a particular land right in a particular area. You're going to give this person money and get interest from that money. You'll be in business. But also, that money is going to help someone clear that consignment and come and do his or her sales. So you've, in a way, helped each other. You have in a way built each other. You have in a way supported each other. Then where do you best to say that money lending is a bad thing? 
It only gets bad if my intention for giving you money is to seize your, your collateral security. Even when you have the money to pay back, I start dodging you. Even when you have the money to pay back, I take advantage of your situation to seize your property, to transfer your property to my name, to sell off your property. But the disciplines that we've built at Jonaki Holdings that even if you commit your car that is worth 100 million or 50 million, and we give you 20 million, even when you fail totally, and that is after trying all the means, we sit down with you, even if we dispose of your property at 50 million, and we, we demand of you 30 million, the balance of 20 million is given back to you. Now, that should be the gist, it should be the mind with which you start your money lending business with. But if you want to get rich quick scheme, you won't thrive. Because through word of mouth, just like how positive information can move, negative information is going to flow as well. And the clients are going to, communic through, to, to communicate through each other and tell their friends that, you know, don't joke around with that company. Don't get along with that business. They will seize your property. The intention is not to serve you, but to take advantage of you and to take your property, to sell your property. So if you're in business to stay, then you should be able not to focus on someone's collateral security, but rather look at the cash flow, but rather look at the ability of someone to actually pay back, but also look at helping each other. We have been suffering because of COVID-19. How do you react if a client comes to you and he tells you, Jonan, business has not been moving very well, so I'd beg to commit this little money and I'll keep paying gradually. What is your reaction? Are you taking advantage of the situation? Which you are very well aware. Most of clients that are return clients that you've served before and they have been very faithful. But just because of COVID, someone has failed to pay and you want to sell their property, you want to sell their home, you want to sell their land, you want to sell their car. How about working out a way on how someone can actually pay back? So as you, as you think of starting a money lending business, First, scrutinize your mind. First, check your mind. First, and first, know in your in your conscience what is the intention with which you come to business of money lending. Is the intention to get a lot of money in a quick time? Proverbs thirteen eleven says that this honest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. So get rich quick, get money quick, but not sustainably help you, might not run your business sustainably, especially if you have a future, if you have a vision for your business. You will not sustainably run it if you have that get-rich-quick mentality. Because you end up doing some dubious things that might eventually call for your collapse, that will eventually affect you in your clientele, that will eventually sell bad of your name. So, the key, key thing, the key, key insight, number two, that you should look at, that you should look at, is making use of your network. And you can maximize it through word of mouth. And you can only maximize it if your intention for doing money lending is not to take advantage of the, the collateral security, take advantage of the clientele, but rather to serve them, so that both of you, business and their guy, can actually thrive. So, key insight number two. Key insight number three. What is the vision that you have? What is the picture that you have in your mind? What is the picture that you have in your mind? Are you doing it for daily bread? Are you doing it for getting food, for getting rent? The start could be at that level, but are you keeping there? What is that ultimate vision that you look at your business at? This might not necessarily even apply to money lending alone. It might apply to any other business, any other venture that you're doing. What picture do you have for the future of that business? Is it just for giving you food, daily bread? It shouldn't be. The business should even be able to outlive you. 
the business should even be able to sustainably run in your absentia. I remember I shared, I have a live stream shared on this. You can check out my YouTube and our website. I shared in detail on this. Maturity of the business starts at the start. As you're starting the business, what picture, what image do you have of your business? Are you looking at it laissez-faire? Are you looking at it in that micro level? Or you want to scale it up later on? Or you want to scale it up to get to a macro level, to get to a bigger level? But you cannot get to that level if you don't have it in the picture as you're starting that business. So if you intend to start that money lending business, are you going to stagnate at that level as a money lender? Or would you wish to graduate to a microfinance institution? Or would you wish to, to graduate to a tier three commercial bank? Do you have a picture of where you're heading? Do you have a picture of where you're heading? Some of the microfinance institutions, some of the banks have actually started at that small level, at tier four. micro deposit institution, they have started at that level. But they have not kept at that level. They keep growing. They keep stepping it up. But you have to have an image of where you're going, a vision of where you're going, not to stagnate at that level. Yes, it might be small for now. It might be giving you your daily bread. It might be perhaps vending for your rent and all that. But are you keeping there? So I beseech you not to keep there. Not to look at that level, not to keep at that level. Step it higher. Have a bigger picture. Have a bigger picture of your future. It's only then that you can actually know how to handle your client. It's only then that you actually get robust system. It's only then that you can actually even rent out a better, a better space, a better office than you'd have rented. Because time will come when you'll make money and have a bit of it, you can sustainably get rent and the other things and still remain with money. So what next? That's why some of the guys even divest, get the money from the business that is thriving, that is a cash cow, and they go and invest in another area that is not even, that does not even have good returns. Because the person has reached a ceiling, he does not have a bigger picture for his business. He does not have a picture for his business. He has reached the ceiling. The only option he has now is to decelerate, is now to get low, or even put a cap. For those who have read John Maxwell, the, 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 the law of the lead, you, you've reached your lead, the real cap, so you cannot get further. You cannot get further. So at the start of your business, have a big picture. Have something big. Some, something big. It's usually called big, hairy, audacious goal. What is it that you want to be? Are you going to keep stagnant there? So you should be progressive. The other key insight, the other key insight that even communicates with this other previous one is get a coach, get a mentor. Get a mentor who has done it before. There are some decisions in money learning that might cost you millions of money, yet you'd have avoided if you got someone along, if you got someone to mentor you, especially for someone who is already at the level that you anticipate to be at. There are people who have thrived that you can look up to, even if it means paying them. That cost is not commensurate to the amount of money you have lost had you taken that bad decision. So you might think you're saving just because you've not looked out for a mentor or a coach because of his cost in courts, and yet you lose money that would even have paid for him and also saved you a lot more. Especially if your business is looked at in a bigger picture. So colleagues, Getting a mentor in this business, it might not even be money lending alone. Any other area, 
there's someone who is better than you. I don't think you're the best of the best in the business because there are usually ups and downs. There are usually competitions. But there's someone that you look up to, especially if you have a big picture of that business or that area that you're in. Get a mentor, get a coach. You might think you're paying them a lot, but it's not a lot based on what you benefit. Especially if someone shares with you the ideas, the principles, do you apply them? Now I've come to realize that some things that you give up pro bono, some things that you give out free of charge, people do not take them seriously. And ultimately, they do not benefit of them. But if you've even paid for, a, for, for that coach session, if you have paid for that mentorship, you tend to take the things that you're told seriously. You tend to apply them and eventually benefit from them. You eventually benefit from them. So set out a budget for that particular coach to help you. That you, where you are expected to be, someone is already there. Take a step and invest. Take a step and invest. And you won't regret. Take a step and invest. You won't regret. So you got to look out for a coach, for a mentor. It might not be money lending necessarily or any other, any other business that you're in. Get someone who is better than you and let that person walk that journey with you. Because there are a million decisions that is going to save you from. There are a million mistakes that is going to help you from. There are many losses that you'd have suffered. But if you talk to your coach or a mentor who is better in that area, you actually might step them off. And mind you, it's good to get someone who is already doing something that you actually aren't expect to do. Not just in words, but real practical things. It's only then that you'll actually maximize such a person. I see my time is fast spent. The other key last thing that you have to look out for, the key insight, is that start with little money. Don't wait to accumulate 100 million or 1 billion or 150 million to start the business. It more so money lending. Jonaki Holdings started at 400,000 and we kept growing gradually, gradually, gradually. So you might start at a million, you might start at two million, at five million. But it's better to learn the details, the few things, gradually. Lots of money is at stake if you're starting, most if you've not been in that industry before. Lots of money is at stake. So you had better start with little money and grow with it, and grow with it. So that as, as, as the loan portfolio grows, you're also growing with it in experience, in knowledge. So don't wait to accumulate 100 million or 50 million to start doing business. So test out your, your network with the little money that you have, then grow with your network as a key last item. So the five insights that I've shared with you today, but take them at heart. As I've already told you, if I share these things and you do not apply them, you won't benefit of them. So you'll have wasted your time to actually Tune in. And I can only be happy if you actually apply this that I share with you. Because I know that if you apply it in your business, you will definitely benefit. If you can commit your time to come and join this live stream, then you had better apply the things that I actually share. One or two things applied, I'll be very, very happy. So apply those key insights, and I'll be glad to see you at the top. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I appreciate uh, your commitment this evening. And I look forward to sharing with you next Friday. Check us out on www.jonakiholdings.com. Check out all the things that you actually do. I thank you, and God bless you. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you.